This is chapter 26 on the Cold War. Seems kind of crazy to call something a Cold War. So if we need to know what and when this is, it is basically from 1947 to 1991. And who knows, we may be revisiting this particular time in history with the problems that are happening in the Ukraine and um, Mr. Putin, the leader of Russia. It was a sustained state of political and military tensions between powers in the Western Bloc dominated by the United States with NATO among its allies and the powers of the Eastern Bloc dominated by the Soviet Union along with the Warsaw Pact. This began after a success of their temporary wartime alliance against Nazi Germany, leaving the USSR and the U.S. as two superpowers with profound economic and political differences. The neutral fraction arose with the non-aligned movement founded by Egypt, India, and Yugoslavia. This fraction rejected association with either the U.S.-led uh, West or the Soviet-led East. The Cold War was so named because two major powers, each possessing nuclear weapons and thereby threatened with mutual assured destruction, never met in direct military combat. Instead, in their struggle for global influence, they engaged in ongoing psychological warfare in a regular indirect confrontation through proxy wars. Section 1, a clash of interests. So if you guys look at the map to the right and you guys can see uh, the different areas that are green versus the different areas that are a reddish salmon color, you can see uh, Western thought, U.S. thought in Europe versus the Eastern European thought. After World War II, the U.S. and the Soviet Union became hostile with one another. This became known as the Cold War. The U.S. hoped a victory over the Axis powers, as well as the creation of the United Nations, would ease tensions among the countries. However, this did not happen, and the two countries were constantly in competition with one another. With the war officially over, the Soviet Union was worried about security. Germany had invaded the Soviet Union two times over a 30-year span, and the Soviets did not want to have another invasion take place. The Soviets were also communist and wanted to spread communism into other countries. That, by the way, is one of the premises of communism. This also raised concerns in the Soviet Union because the Soviets, through the capitalist countries, would try to end communism. American economic concerns. Many Americans believe that the Great Depression led to World War II. By 1945, Roosevelt and his advisors believed that world peace was the key to economic growth. In order to promote economic growth, America would have to increase world trade. Now, here are some symbols of the uh, Soviet Union. You can see there's a five-pointed star, the hammer and the sickle, and then the hammer stands for the industrial working class and the sickle stands for the agricultural workers. The, where that parade is taking place in the upper left-hand corner is known as Red Square, red being a very important color to communism. And where you see the letter CCCP, that's really not the letter CCCP. That's the way you interpret it with your English language. It's SSSR. And so that is basically seeing the USSR as we translate it. So the origins of the Cold War. We have the Yalta Conference, the Declaration of Liberated Europe. After reaching a compromise on Poland, Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin agreed to issue a Declaration of Liberated Europe. The Declaration was declared to give the people the right to choose a form of government under which they live. Well, tensions begin to rise. Within mere weeks of the Yalta Conference, the Soviets began to work against the decisions that were made at the conference. When this happened, tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union started getting high. So we see Poland a divided German, dividing Germany and Great Britain. Specifically, I'm going to look at dividing Germany because this was a very crazy system. Uh, West Germany, as where it says Federal Republic of Germany, was controlled by France, U.S., and Great Britain. Um, had amazing economic recovery compared to after World War I. With the Marshall Plan um, was working. Unemployment went from 8% to 0.04%. The leaders of the country were still known as chancellors. In the mid, in fact, today there's Angela Merkel is um, the chancellor of Germany. In the late 60s, there was an economic downturn and the Socialist Party became powerful, but nothing like the Nazis. One of the main problems at the Yalta Conference was what to do with Germany. At the conference, the three leaders decided uh, that Germany would be divided into four parts. This is just crazy. The United States, Soviet Union, Great Britain, and France. And then um, Stalin, um, happy that Germany was being divided, still wanted a single uh, to strangle them economically. And then, of course, we have the fact that Berlin, located inside East Germany, is a city that also gets divided into four parts. So Truman Kate takes control, Potsdam Conference. Remember, Roosevelt dies, and so Truman takes over. He's the one that actually dropped the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki at the end of World War II 
After Roosevelt died, Vice President Truman became the new leader of the United States. Truman met with Stalin at Potsdam to discuss Germany. At the meeting, both agreed that reparations had to be paid somehow, but Truman's main idea was to not allow Germany to turn against, to turn communists out of desperation. Stalin was still ruthless and wanted to hit German hard with reparations. Reparations are when you pay for something you did in your past. While the Allies wanted to allow the Germans to rebuild their economy through industry. So you see a picture of the Iron Curtain. You can actually, uh, the Iron Curtain is a figure of speech where you can see it to the right on that map. It's basically an idea. It's not a real Iron Curtain. It's not a real wall there. I mean, just because there's the wall in Berlin, this is not an entire wall built across there. At the Potsdam Conference, Truman was successful in his fight for reparations, but he was not successful at pushing the Soviets to uphold the Declaration of Liberated Europe. With no other option, the Iron Curtain had to be cast on Europe. The Iron Curtain divided the Eastern Europe communist countries, satellites, with the rest of Western Europe. The idea was to stop the spreading of communism in capitalist countries. And so we have here containing communism because of that. Although tensions were high, and you notice we are on the second um, section, Americans believed that the relationship with the Soviets could be fixed. However, with communism growing stronger, the Allies continued to airlift to German supplies in the midst of Soviet hostility. The Allies continued to push the Soviets to allow free elections in Eastern Europe. Okay, so the long telegram, the Truman Doctrine, the Marshall Plan, and the crisis in Iran. Specifically, we're going to look at the Truman Doctrine. Harry Truman, the President of the United States, said in 1947 that the U.S. would give money to countries threatened by communism, just as in Greece. The U.S. felt that communism would spread faster if more countries fell to communism. Truman felt it would help with containment. The Marshall Plan, of, after George Marshall, the Secretary of State, wrote this to rebuild Europe. The thinking was that if communists moved into uh, and rebuilt European countries, they would more likely become communist. The Soviet countries refused to participate and saw this as an attempt by the Americans to buy support. Let's face it, it probably was and it seemed to work in some cases. It was clear um, that there was going to be a battle between the superpowers. So the Berlin crisis, I've been talking about this a little as we've gone through this. Germany was, uh, you can see the different, the map to the right, how there was East Germany and West Germany, and basically that East part of Germany was Soviet, and the West part of Germany was divided by France, Great Britain, and the United States. Well, to add this to a complicating, confusing situation, you see Berlin, that blue dot in the red area, that actually, that city, which was the capital of Germany, was also divided into four spots by France, Great Britain, and the United States and the Soviet Union. The area that was um, located for the Soviet Union, um, that's where the wall was built, the Berlin Wall. And so you can see a picture down to the right. So in 1948, the U.S. concluded that the Soviets were deliberately trying to undermine the German economy. In response to that, the U.S., France, Great Britain agreed to combine their zones to form a country that would govern itself. West Berlin also became part of what was known as West Germany. The airlifts, with the decision to create West Germany, the Soviets knew that they were not going to get their reparations. To retaliate, the Soviets created a blockade and did not allow West Germans to get their food and supplies. The U.S. would use Berlin airlift to get people of West Germany the supplies they needed to live on. On May 12, Stalin finally lifted the blockade on West Germany. So basically, he was just stopping them from getting the food shipped in. And the Americans decided to fly it over and drop it down. NATO, the North, Ali or North Atlantic Treaty Organization, originally included 12 countries. The member countries agreed to come to the aid of any member who was attacked. This was the first time um, in history that America had committed itself to maintaining peace in Europe. So remember the um, alliances of World War I and how things fell because of that. You know, sometimes you could get nervous because this might represent that again. Okay, so the concepts of the new military alliance, the arms race, and the wall in Berlin, you guys can see those areas and read them on your own. Um, the early years of the Cold War, Civil War, and Revolution in China. Since the late 1920s, Civil War had been taking place in China. When World War II started, both sides stopped fighting, so Japan would not occupy the country. To prevent a communist revolution in Asia, the United States sent 
a nationalist government, $2 billion in aid. Imagine how much that would be now. The Nationalist Party did not use the aid properly and eventually lost the war. The members of the Nationalist Party fled to Taiwan. With the Communists in power and the People's Republic of China was established in October 1949. It is one of the only remaining communist countries in the world left today. After the fall with the rise of communism in China, the U.S. kept good relations with Taiwan. The United States also needed an ally in Asia. The U.S. decided it was essential to build relations with Japan and encourage a rapid recovery of Japan's industrial economy. Japan is now viewed as a key defining, uh, as the key to defending Europe. Then we went into the Korean War, and so the 38th parallel becomes this dividing line you guys can see between North and South Korea, and basically North Korea is communist, it's very close to China, and South Korea is, to this day, capitalist. So this uh, bought time for MacArthur and his reinforcements to arrive. With the help of his reinforcements, MacArthur was able to push the North Koreans past the 38th parallel and then very north of the country near China. But again, this ends up driving us into a war between North and South Korea. The same thing it will end up happening in Vietnam. China enters the war with the advancement of the UN troops. The Chinese government felt threatened. Feeling the threat, the Chinese unleashed an attack on the UN troops that pushed them all the way back to the 38th parallel. Truman fires MacArthur when China pushed the UN troops back. MacArthur wanted to drop the atomic bomb on China. Staying true to his limited war policy, Truman fired MacArthur for insubordination when he publicly criticized the president. And remember, MacArthur was a war hero, so having all of this happens is kind of crazy. The Korean War was a major turning point in the Cold War. Originally, the U.S. planned to protect Europe. However, once the Cold War spread to Asia, the U.S. made it essential to protect Asia as well. So you guys can see the NATO versus the Warsaw Pact and who are the members of each of those. And then here on section three, you can see the Cold War and American society. Basically, people start to get accused of being communist. And it's kind of funny because we we have free speech. And so it's um, funny that people aren't allowed to be communist. I mean, you have the right to be that. I personally don't want that to happen. I personally don't, you know, want communism to spread in the United States. But at the end of the day, you have the freedom to believe that if you're not threatening our country. So um, the loyalty review program, with the fear of communism spreading in the United States government, many Americans were screened to fight the, to fight the threat of communism in America. There were 6 million federal employees screened. While 14,000 of these employees faced intense scrutiny, 2,000 employees quit their jobs due to pressure, while another 212 were fired for questionable loyalty, although their actual evidence against them was no actual evidence was uncovered. Okay, originally the House on Un-American Activities Committee was relatively small. The committee rose when J. Edgar Hoover capitalized, um, capitulated it to prominence. The goal of the HUAC was to isolate communists and end their influence, and specifically Alger Hiss was an American citizen that worked in the Roosevelt administration. He was accused of being communist by Whitaker Chambers. Hiss strongly denied the claims against him, but eventually lost when Chambers used the pumpkin papers to prove he was telling the truth. The jury agreed and convicted him of perjury. You can see the paper there to the right. And then the Rosenbergs were a communist family living in New York. The family was deemed, uh, was condemned, I believe, for death for espionage. Many people believe that they were not spies nor were they leaders of a potential communist party. Most believe they are victims of the anti-communist frenzy. And so all of this fear is called the red scare, okay? So red, I told you, is a prominent color within communism, and this is the red square. They feared, Americans feared communists and were infiltrating the U.S. population. Many businesses and leaders of major parties and organizations required screenings for workers and citizens for safety purposes. Now they screen for drugs. Back then they were screening for political ideals. Okay, so McCarthy uh, charges. Joseph McCarthy was a senator from Wisconsin. He pushed a widespread fear that uh, communists were all over the country. Most of this fear stemmed from his own personal fear of the situation. McCarthy also accused many elected officials of being communists. And basically when that would happen, um, then they would... Uh, 
you know, lose credibility. And he might 